Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number four of the UBL and uh, we're up against Old Man Tup. Now this is going to be a really interesting matchup because I do kind of think we match up really well against his team, but there are going to be a handful of things that I just don't have answers for, right? And honestly, mainly the Rotom Heat. Now, obviously, uh, you can see this is going to be a super offensive match coming from me, right? So again, I did feel like I had a little bit of a matchup here, so I felt like I could build really straightforwardly. I'm just going for Scarred Fish's friends on Dracovish. I'm going for Banded Pyro Balls on Cinderace and Scarfed Air Slashes on Togekiss. And I really want to deal as much damage as I can, especially because it's going to be a game of kind of getting information on his team and trying to figure out which Mon of his is going to be Scarfed because I want to know at, uh, in what situations my Cinderace is most free to kind of just click Pyro Ball and deal massive amounts of damage. And as it stands, I can still just straight up lose to certain Mons, right? So... First of all, uh, right off the bat, seeing you no know, Haluch is kind of kind of bananas to me. I really expected uh, for something like that to want to set up on me. Um, I could lose to a, to a Dragon Dancing Flygon if it uh, gets too out of hand. Uh, I was also surprised to see no no Gardevoir, but. Everything else on the team, like Mammoth Swine, Mammoth Swine single-handedly can beat up my, my entire team. Uh, it's pretty much the only reason why I brought a max defensive Silvali Water. Otherwise, uh, I really wanted to bring so many other different Silvali sets, but Mammoth Swine on its own can just destroy my entire team. So I have to play around very, very carefully and try to figure out what I'm going to do against it. But even then, I feel like most of the time when it wants to come in, it just kind of gets a KO. And I can't really do a whole heck of a lot of against it other than try to maneuver myself such that uh, I don't lose too much in many exchanges and I can uh, force some switches and make sure that I'm hitting harder than than, uh, hit the, than the rest of his team can in between times when Mammoth Swine wants to come in. But with that, I'm just going to get right into the match. So we're going straight into the match and uh, I was struggling with what I wanted to lead off with. I ended up leading off with the Rotomo. It felt like a really solid catch-all lead uh, to try to gauge whatever you wanted to do in the in the early game. And uh, yeah, I, I never really put much thought in team building as to what I should lead off with. Uh, I feel like I would benefit a lot from that. But um, yeah, I really did need this Rotomo as healthy as possible to kind of deal with the Flygon. But uh, this thing is so defensive that I felt even if it has to take a hit or two, I think it'll be fine to deal with the Flygon regardless. And I will be in a decent enough position to kind of um, make sure that this Rotom is as useful as possible for uh, throughout the entirety of the match. But uh, I believe I just go for a Volt Switch here as he re reveals the knockoff, right? So my first thought when the Cinchino comes out is that this thing could be Scarfed to try to deal with um, anything that I want to lead off with. Like, even if I lead off with a, with a Cinderace... Um, he could scarf you turn and try to get himself into a favorable position and uh, i'm trying to watch out a theme for this opening part of the match is going to be what on his team is scarfed because i want to get to the point where i'm clicking buns with cinderace as quickly as possible because cinderace is strong and it's banded and it's here to deal damage right but he goes for the knockoff and i can go and I'm operating under the assumption that this thing might be uh, scarfed into knockoff. So I feel like going into my Silvali and getting a parting shot off is going to be uh, the best position for me to get some momentum going as I can possibly get here, right? So that's what I kind of go for here. And from here, like I said, uh, whatever's going to get me closest to clicking buttons with my Cinderace and putting dents into the team and uh, dealing damage is going to ultimately get me leaving this matchup with a win. But he reveals U-turn, so he switches up moves. He, it is not choice at all, which uh, is really interesting to me, first of all, because um, I kind of assumed that Bullet Seed would be non-negotiable, uh, knowing that I had the Quagsire on my side of the field. So I was really curious as to why he uh, didn't want to stay in there, there. Maybe he just wanted to really preserve the Chinchino. But damage onto my Silvali would have been huge for him in this early game. Regardless, I get the parting shot off. Uh, everything's going pretty much how I thought that turn would go. Uh, I hit the flag on and I'm able to go out into my Togekiss. Right, so... 
I felt really safe here with my Togekiss. My Togekiss um, resists both stabs. At best, he's he's uh, trying to hit me with stone edges, and honestly, my chances of flinching with with uh, air slash are almost as high as him hitting a stone edge. But I don't think he expected me to be scarfed. I think he expected this to be more of a defensive pivot, where uh, where like I said, I I can deal some damage back to him while. Uh, being immune to both stabs so I don't think he, he expected a scarf to kiss at all which is um, really which is one of those moments where I really felt like I was building up m momentum by catching him off guard with a scarf token kiss. However, it does allow him to go into the road and wash, and it does next to no damage, which uh, is totally fair. I really thought I was going to do more damage than that, but uh, he knows that he's in a solid position here, and uh, it really just puts in my mind how much how many how much resources I'm going to have to devote to kind of taking out this Rotom Wash, and it's going to be a huge thorn in my side uh, for the entirety of the match, right? So from here, uh, I need to get the heck out of here. Obviously, I really can't be taking too much damage with my Tokus. I really need Tokus to be uh, he, uh, here for the entire match and just uh, like my Cinder is just dealing mass amounts of damage it's going to uh, be important to weaken his team down to kind of try to win uh, with Cinder or something to that effect but he uh, could smell my my Quagsire play and he uh, Quagsire here is completely immune to Rotom stabs because of water absorb and being ground type so I'm gonna have to see what uh, the Rotom has to, to even touch my my Quagsire, but I could smell the bullet seed coming a mile away, so I immediately go out into my Cinderace, and because I confirmed early in the match that this thing is not scarfed, um, that's going to mean that my Cinderace is going to presumably take around 25-ish percent from a, from a bullet seed and be completely free to collect a banded stab pyro ball. Uh, into something on his team and uh, this is exactly the, this is exactly the moment that I was trying to build out um, from the very beginning and uh, I, I do take a moment to think about it here because uh, part of me is thinking uh, I could still get a strong hit off on U-turn and it preserves kind of this momentum game that, that, that I'm playing here But ultimately I decide that I need to take the damage wherever I can get it And I also didn't want to uh, mess with timer too too much. So I uh, wanted to preserve t as much time as I possibly could for um, the later game however late this game would go and uh like I said, fr from here, there's so little on his team that would really want to take baited pyro balls. Um, and I feel I feel like I had to take this damage now that it's available to me. Um, I didn't quite think that I would be able to, to like KO whatever I wanted on his team, right? Um, but the flygon comes in. Uh, I hit the pyro ball, thankfully, and I straight up KO the flygon. Now. Running some calcs after the match, I believe, I believe, uh, I would not have been able to, to remotely KO Flygon if it wasn't for being banded. But uh, because I was banded, it allowed me to just straight up KO from about 50-ish percent. And now this Rotom is going to be able to come in, and I'm going to have to figure out some way of dealing with it. Now, I, interestingly, didn't even try to, to U-turn here. Or no, sorry, I'm banded. Um... I go straight in my Quagsire because again, Quagsire, completely immune to both stabs. Uh, this thing could have will o -Wisp, I mean, it could have Toxic for all I know. But um, it's going to force him to give me information about this uh, Rotom and ideally give me some kind of opening to how to beat it. He doubles again and goes into Salazzle this time. Now, this really, really interested me because... Uh, also, okay, so this was a panic moment for me in this matchup because in the moment I was starting to look up. I I was certain that this thing got like grass knot or something, and that's why he, he brought it in. Uh, it turns out it doesn't get any grass moves, but I didn't finish my, my research. And again, I didn't want to mess with timer until after this turn was over. Because, yeah, no, that 30-second timer just came up, and I was kind of panicking because of the timer. And you, and you have to understand, right? So I was ecstatic about the fact that I decided I'm not going to um, 
be on camera or anything like that. I, I'm just going to uh, straight up record what's happening on the screen. I was pretty excited about that. So I was vibing to, to, to some music. I was having a solid time just like doing, just like not having to like uh, talk through this match in, in, in real time. So um, when this thing came in, it was it was a definite panic moment for me. And uh, again, I didn't want to mess with timer. I was, I was I felt like I was already doing super solid on timer, but um, but for whatever reason I just yeah I, I assume Slazzle got like grass out or something and uh, it forced me, it forced the switch out here when he toxic to me and I really just easily could have gone for an earthquake and straight up gotten the KO on this thing but I'm able to go into Tokus I get an air slash off and uh, I do a decent amount of damage. I presume that I prevent it from going for a sludge bomb on me, uh, which is super unfortunate. But again, uh, this is what Togekiss is kind of here to do. Togekiss, Scar Togekiss is absolutely my favorite Togekiss set. I love Togekiss to death just for this Scar Togekiss set that's just, um, that just air slashes everything. Modest Scarf Air Slash, uh, doing 50% on a crit, not even super like we do, but on a crit uh, to uh, Ferrothorn here. But regardless, uh, I definitely can't stand here any longer. He, um, he, he, he didn't want to lose this Lazzle, and I can't lose this thing quite well yet, especially when uh, Toxic is taken down. So uh, I'm going to go out into Rotomo. This is uh, an odd play on my part, but I felt like this would be able to let me pivot at least. And because the Flygon was gone, um, it, I felt like I was a lot more free to use uh my Rotom in more situations just for like this pivoting thing where I can eat up a hit and then um make some other stuff happen. I I kinda did want to go for the Willow Sphere, but I ended up not doing that. I believe I ended up just going for the Volt Switch. But uh regardless now again I uh I I, I feel like I've lost a lot of the momentum that I was building up early on and I'm trying to rebuild some of that. I'm trying to uh make some things happen here where um i, I kind of have my foot on the gas a little bit more so i ended up going out into my cinderace and he knocks me off which is really a really interesting moment for me here because this is a moment where i really never thought i'd, I'd be able to get it off all season but i ended up going for the court change and i'm really hoping um i I'm able to accept the fact that I might go down this turn, but he's staring down a very offensive in Cinderace. It's not banded anymore, but still very offensive. He knows that, and uh, very possible that uh, I get a free switch out and a very free core change, and I get it off. I did not think all season that I'd be able to get off a core change, but uh, I got rocks on his side of the field now and off of my side of the field. And this thing comes in where, again, this thing has changed moves as well. I thought this was another potential Scarf candidate, but this is revealed uh, to, to switch up moves as well. And I guaranteed I'll speed this thing. I am a max speed uh, Jolly Cinderace, and I can just click Zen Headbutt and pick up a KO here. And uh, Cinderace is just doing the dang thing right now, right? So we... I feel like, like I said, I, I'm building up that momentum again, um, but this this Mammoth Swine is going to be a huge, huge momentum ender. So now, I'm thinking to myself that um, it's time to kind of give up my Vertimo because uh, the flygon has gone. It, I, I'm, I'm already using it just to like make some pivot plays. I don't really think it's going to be the most useful for the remainder of this match. And uh, by giving this thing up, I think I think first of all it preserves Cinderace, which Cinderace is still really offensive and and can still be massive for me in the later game. In particular, for something uh, like the Ferrothorn and Ferrothorn proves to be a huge, huge pain in my side, which it could be. And uh, getting something going with Rotom is going to be really, really difficult for the remainder of this matchup. But e even then, it looks like Ice Shard is just barely a 2 KO. And uh, if I somehow would said that, it would have been amazing. 
but uh, ultimately I got what I got what I wanted out of that exchange and I still get to keep my Cinderace around I can freely go into my um, Dracovish I believe but uh, this Dracovish moment really kind of gave me anxiety because I thought that he had a really really easy play into into Ferrothorn which would have been problematic for me but I forget sometimes that he doesn't know that I'm scarfed and I've already revealed the scarf he probably thinks that um, that that other scarf was my only scarfer um, but I reasonably often bring multiple scarfers especially when uh, I have two really easy go-to scarfers like Dracovish and Togekiss but um, Especially when the speed tiers work out like this is a matchup where the speed tiers has worked out really really well And this is exactly what I mean when I have um, a solid matchup, right? I, I feel like any matchup for my team where Dracovish can run adamant scarf and Togekiss can run Mo modest scarf is immediately a solid looking matchup um, in my favor, but for here um, I yeah, I guess I just forgot that that he wouldn't assume he, he wouldn't immediately assume that this thing is scarfed and I definitely haven't revealed it yet. So I go for low kick, assuming that the Ferrothorn would want to come in, but I end up picking up the KO on Mammoth Swine, which only after a round of rocks. First of all, the rocks made um the rocks were essential for me to pick up that KO, first of all. And even then, um it was a massive roll for me to pick up that KO. Uh, so obviously Scarf Fish's Rend would have been a much much better play an infinitely better play but uh, I got build out a little bit definitely and I was a little bit surprised that he would not want to go into Ferrothorn in that moment regardless We're here now this thing is back in here, and I'm in a not ideal spot once again, but um, I Still feel like I can rebuild that momentum once again uh, especially because this thing is going to prevent um, being th being thunder waved, any volt switches, any hydro pumps, whatever this thing wants to do, uh, it's gonna have to reveal a fourth move. Is now that I know the thunder wave is there, I'm assuming dual stab, and I'm, and I want to see what whatever the heck this thing's fourth move is going to be. But uh, this is honestly where I get a little bit tilted because I look over at the timer and I see that I still have five minutes. I, I feel like I'm doing pretty healthy on my timer. But um, my opponent Tuff is down to less than a minute. I believe he's in the around the 50 ish second mark uh, here. And even though I have a Quagsire that perfectly walls his Rotom, um, especially now that he, re he that he revealed Hex, right? Like, there's no way that Hex is going to deal enough damage to me where I can't just recover it off every other turn and be fine. I am pretty upset and uh even though that hex turn went perfectly for me and i couldn't have been more happy um seeing that seeing this thing's uh entire move set i'm pretty upset that um my only way through this rotom is to toxic it with with my quagsire and even though my quagsire is always going to be able to beat this thing 1v1 with toxic and uh with recover I'm pretty upset right now that I don't have enough time in the game to be able to toxic stall this thing Rotom and it's really going to be the one thing that's going to stop me so right after that hex turn just a few turns ago I honestly start clicking buttons I don't have any strategy to what I'm doing I'm just attacking trying to wear this thing down I I went out into my Togekiss for absolutely no reason let it go down just to get some dazzling lean damage off because now again I I, re I realized that I don't even have enough time to toxic this thing and I wanted to pick up one more KO. I wanted to do whatever I could in this matchup and and by switching out into that um, Togekiss, I gave him an extra KO for really no real reason. Um, and it's just super unfortunate because, like I said, I know that I have the tools to win. I know that I can easily 1v1 this Rotom with my Quagsire alone. It's going to be a mat. And once um, I get a Toxic off on the Rotom, then we could switch all gosh dang day between Ferrothorn and Rotom and, and all of my mons. But. The Rotom is going to get worn down over time, and I have enough, more than enough offensive firepower 
In particular, with my um, with, with this guy, my um, Savali. My Savali has flamethrower. It can. Uh, I, I believe it, the Ferrothorn is in range now of being KO'd by a flamethrower or close to it. But regardless, um, as as long as I'm able to deal with the Ferrothorn and deal with the Rotom, which I definitely had the tools left to, to be able to do the, both of those things, I know I could have won this match outright, and the fact that uh, the timer was what it was just put me massively on tilt, and like I said, I just started clicking buttons. I kind of completely mentally checked out as soon as I saw that my opponent's timer was at like 50-ish seconds, but ultimately... We're still going to get the win. Like, there was nothing we could have done to lose that match in, in the later game. Like, even if I had given up all but one of my Pokemon, I would have still ended up winning that match in the end due to timer. But, um, that's going to be how week four ends. Uh, with a win, but with a really, really bitter win. Uh, we will win four to three. That is going to add one to our differential. Where we were really, really in a solid position to win 5-0, honestly. If... We just had more time and I didn't uh, make silly button clicking plays that uh, I didn't have to make if I could just talk to install the Rotom. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL and weeks of the AP Academy coming really, really soon. But with that, thank you guys once again for watching. I hope you once again have a 